This is Paul Thomas, Senior Editor with Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Magazine and PharmaManufacturing.com. I'm here at Interfex 2009, and I'm talking today with John Miles, who is President of Microthermix. John, thanks for being with us today. Very good. Thank you. And John, for, uh, for those of you, uh, for those of our listeners and readers who might not be familiar with your company, why don't you tell us what you do and uh, a little bit about the technology behind it. Very good. Thank you. Uh, we work with continuous flow thermal processing. Um, basically, some people would think of it as pasteurization or HTST pasteurization, but we cover conditions that range all the way as high as uh, sterilization conditions that can be very, uh, very high temperature but very short duration. Mm -hmm. So something like pasteurization, obviously it's had applications in other industries. It's only recently been uh, adapted to pharmaceuticals, and why is that? Why is it just now becoming something in pharma? The technology itself has been around for a long time. Uh, a lot of it has been the... The, the technology growing up enough along with the industry realizing it has a need. Um, the idea of being able to shorten heat exposures and increase temperature sufficiently to do what you need to do and optimize sufficiently to retain your active agents or the material that you want to is one that requires a great deal of background and that's actually really come to its maturity in the last probably five to ten years. Mm -hmm. And what heat technology specifically are you talking about here? Um, we work with anything from classically indirect heat transfer, tube and tube, tube and shell, that kind of work. Um, for higher temperatures, we also work with steam injection and vacuum cooling. Um, for clients who really want to have uh, good, good, strong technologies involved, we also have microwave heating, which gives us the ability to work at very low temperatures or to very high temperatures with, with very rapid heat rates. Um, that works, you, you push the button, the machine turns on, and you're hot right now. It's really quite a technology. Mm -hmm. And then it might be a substitute for, say, autoclaving or filtration, something like that. Very good point. The uh, heat processing has the main advantage that it actually can be monitored in real time, so we know what it's doing right now. Sometimes uh, filtration can be difficult to work with in that context. Um, autoclaving has been a, a staple, but it tends to be a long temperature, lower time process. The processing we're working with is actually a very short duration process. Um, it's very uniform um, because the product sees a very brief time temperature history, but that time temperature history is actually modeled to be very, very precise and a much more pinpoint process than autoclaving is. Mm -hmm. And what would be some of your, your typical applications? Uh, what are clients coming to you and asking you for? <laughs> we've, we've seen everything from... Um, materials that are coming from milk as a consequence they have to be sterilized or pasteurized going into the pharma application uh, to microbial media um, there are a number of processes being used with growth media for both pasteurization and sterilization so it, it ranges across the board um, and that's why it as a technology has had to mature because I think the applications are very very broad and so we really have to know what we're doing to model it and optimize it properly mm -hmm. And um, obviously one of the things that your clients are always concerned about is potential damage to the product. Absolutely. How do you manage that? Uh, what's your argument along those lines? The, uh, the fact is that's something clients always have to watch for. Um, and sometimes at these types of conditions, they're really not very familiar with it. So there is often uh, some research clients have to do with it. Uh, we work with the clients to conduct that kind of research. Most of our clients actually purchase the system and conduct their own qualification studies because they have in-house information that they have to develop with their own techniques. Um, that's, a, that's a big challenge because we, we don't have those techniques. The analytical methods and their methods of testing the suitability of a media, they do. Mm -hmm. So those clients will come in, model it to begin with, and then start their own studies to make sure that everything qualifies. And we may modify the operating conditions to help them with that. Mm -hmm. And you do have some sophisticated modeling capabilities yourselves. Oh, yeah. What sorts of things do you do? We, uh, we work with generating uh, time temperature histories. Uh, it's nice to match the particular type of heat transfer, but to be honest, that's not as critical as what the product actually ex is exposed to. So we focus on the time temperature history, and from that we have a number of in-house uh, applications that we use to give us the best methods of thermal process evaluation given a given temperature range or product style. Mm -hmm. And what about the software that you're using and how that software integrates with other systems that the client might be using? The software that we use for process control in our equipment, uh, basically we're usually working with uh, software that we generate in-house, but it's, P it's Siemens 
PLC-based PLCs, so we can interface with pretty much anything Siemens make, makes, and we can uh, make interface tables to work with other materials and systems as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. And um, what else? Uh, what else are you expecting here? What else uh, are you developing right now? Anything that you wish to look forward to in the future? Uh, the interesting part is, is this this particular technology is lending itself to a broad range of applications. Everything from effluent kill systems to kill systems for material coming into labs and into uh, tissue culture and mammalian cell culture facilities. The reason why it's becoming attractive is because the the process is so much more precise than classical methods. It has the advantage of precision over autoclaving and it retains the advantages of thermal processing. So those things give it a broad, broad, broad application. So what I'm looking forward to is, is companies really learning how to use the technology and adapting it because it's not just one process. It's a broad range of time and temperature exposures that are regulated with anything from the type of heat transfer on down to the entire system design. So you spend a lot of your time educating your, your clients. With, you hit it right on yeah. the money. We spend a great deal of time, and we've been doing this now for 20 years. And we're very accustomed to that. That's what we spend our time doing. And once clients understand and we work with them to identify what's going to be the best solution for them, it works out very well because all the expectations are established. We know what they want, they know what they want, and we know how to proceed. Great. Well, John Miles with uh, Microthermics, thanks so much for being with us Very good. Thank you very much.